Um, good, well, we'll start with some introductions. I'm John O'Hare. Uh, I live southwest of here in Arcade. Uh, I do dairy nutrition work for Cargill. And uh, I'll let Ben do, do his introduction, so. Yeah, I'm ben Cashel, work, uh, work for Cargill in Northern Pennsylvania and Southern New York. And uh, have a little bit of a show and hobby myself, so this is get to practice this stuff at home. Good. So most, most of my work is more with commercial dairy cows. Um, ben does the, the show thing on the side. Uh, my, my kids actually show sheep, so um, kind of kind of into it on, on that side of things. But um, we'll go ahead and get started. As, as you got questions, uh, ask, ask, raise your hands, whatever. We'll, we'll try to get them answered. Uh, we've got quite a bit of stuff here, but we'll get through it. So. Just wanted to start out talking about the different uh, growth stages and stages of animals that we're going to talk about. So we'll talk about them specifically on what's important nutritionally and, and feed-wise what, what we need to be having in front of those animals at these different stages. So we got kind of our, our newborns and milk calves up to two and a half, three months old. And then we get into those post wean calves, three to four months of age. And then we get into that really rapid growth stage, five to 10 month old calves. We'll talk about those specifically. And then um, show stage, Ben's gonna cover for us and uh, kind of what we need to do right during the show season or before the show season. And then yearling, yearling animals, um, we'll also talk, talk through those. So milk stage animals, um, what's, what's really important about calves, say a day, a day old? So we wanna maximize their growth so they're, so they're ready for the show, but what's really, really important? Yep, go ahead. Colostrum. Colostrum, yep. So what's colostrum have to do with, you know, she's two hours old, we give it colostrum, what's that gonna translate to as a show calf six months later or 12 months later? What's your thought? Growth, yep, anything else? It'll help like stabilize their um, immunity to like, like bacteria. Sure, yep, so bo both of you are right. Clostrum's got a lot of nutrients in it, a lot of energy and a lot of protein for the calf to grow, but it also has the antibodies in it that calves need to develop their immune system, okay? And so you're not gonna see a lot of, you know, really big show calves when in their show that have been sick for very many days of their life, right? So really, really important to get them off to a good start in that first day. Get them born in a clean environment and get them fed colostrum properly. So, um, so as we get to two, three days old, we're gonna transition them over onto milk feeding at that point. We're either gonna feed milk replacer or uh, whole milk. Um, so I wanna talk about milk replacer first. When we're reading a tag on milk replacer or somebody says 2220 milk replacer to you, what, what does the 22 stand for? That first number when we're talking about milk replacer. Yep, ideas? Protein. protein, yep. So protein and fat are the two numbers and they're always listed in that order, okay? So if we say 2220, it's 22% protein, 20% fat. Um, we would recommend staying 22% protein or above for your show calves. Um, <clears throat> one word of caution would be is to not have too high a protein and too low a fat content. We need them both in a, in a nice ratio so the calf has protein to grow and energy to grow, okay? So 24-18 would be about the, the most spread that we wanna see um, on your milk replacer. The, the spread between protein and fat, we, we wouldn't wanna see it bigger than say 24, 18, okay? That's gonna give the calf adequate energy from fat and adequate protein to grow. Um, so as we get, the other option would be to feed whole milk or waste milk. Um, one of the concerns with that, so it's great feed for calves, the only concern would be the bacteria content or some other disease issues with say yonis. So pasteurization um, is one way to avoid that. Um, um, and otherwise just handling the milk so our bacteria counts are, are low on that whole milk, okay? Any, anything we use to take milk from where we're milking the cows out to feed the calves, we just want to make sure that equipment's clean to keep bacteria counts low. <clears throat> so we got our calf, she's a week old now, she's transitioned fully onto our milk replacer or, or whole milk. 
Um, our next goal is to really get her starter, calf starter intake started, okay? So one of the ways we can do that well is to offer um, small amounts of fresh calf starter every day. So we don't wanna leave starter in there for two weeks, let her drool on it and uh, get it all dirty and nasty and expect her to start eating it, right? So just start out with a handful or two or three. As she starts nibbling on it, change that out. Give some of the older feed maybe to, to an older calf that's already um, eating starter well and give her another handful or two of fresh feed and really, really try to encourage her to, to start um, her calf starter intake. The reason that's really, really important is it's the intake of dry calf starter that's gonna start her rumen development. So the milk is digested in their abomasum, which is their true stomach like we have, but we gotta get her rumen developed so that when we wean her off of milk, she can digest feed like cows do as ruminants, okay? <clears throat> and the intake of calf starter is what starts that whole process. Um, so a good goal for intake would be a pound of starter intake by three weeks of age. So by starting them off on small amounts, offering it to them, keeping it very fresh and available, <clears throat> a realistic goal would be one pound of starter intake by three weeks of age. Another thing that really helps encourage starter intake is, is access to clean water. <clears throat> so calves need water um, to encourage dry matter intake. I use the example of I can't eat a lot of pretzels without having something to wash it down with, okay? So, it's really, really important to keep change the water regularly so it's clean and clean and fresh. Um, it's best to not feed any hay at this stage. So we're talking calves less than two, two and a half months old. Um, just offer them starter as dry feed. The starter will encourage the development of the rumen faster than uh, dry hay will, okay? So all the way through all these stages, um, the environment the calf is in is really, really important, but particularly as baby calves, if they're wet, they're gonna use a lot more calories to stay warm than if they're dry, okay? So we want those calories to go to growth. We want those calories to go to um, <clears throat> growing their immune system so they stay strong and healthy. So keeping them dry is really, really important all the way through, but particularly as baby calves. Um, so in commercial dairy situation, we'd wean calves at like six to eight weeks old. So a month and a half or two months old. In show calves, we're gonna extend the milk feeding phase out about an additional month. <clears throat> okay, so we can capture the growth from the additional milk intake. Um, so we're looking at two and a half to three months of age when you're gonna wean your show calf, okay? And we wanna make sure that calf is healthy and sailing along smoothly before we wean her. Weaning is a stressful thing on the calves, so we don't want to, you know, if she's been sick, we don't want to go ahead and wean her the next day and stress her again and potentially um, put her into a tailspin that way. So um, a goal for weaning your calf, <clears throat> it's important that they eat about five pounds of calf starter per head per day before you start weaning them off of milk. That's gonna ensure their rumen is, is fully developed adequately so that when we remove that milk that they can digest and absorb the nutrients from their starter. Any questions so far on, on kind of calves on milk getting up to weaning? Okay, <clears throat> so we're gonna wean that calf two and a half to three months old and then we're gonna kind of turn up the heat a little bit on, on our dry feeds, okay? So our grain feeding, um, we're going to transition from a calf starter to a, to a heifer grower. Um, the calf starter is going to be 22-23% protein, heifer grower is going to be more like 18% protein, and we're going to transition them from starter to grower over a period of time so that we don't just change the feed they're eating all in one day. Blend the two together for a period of five to seven days so that they adjust smoothly over onto the heifer grower. And our target's gonna be six to eight pounds of total intake on that uh, grower feed at that point. Any intake above six or eight pounds of hay, or I'm sorry, six to eight pounds of grower needs to be from hay, okay? And preferably a soft second or third cutting hay um, is gonna 
going to be your best choice for maximum intake on baby calves. <clears throat> so we've got our calf that's now three to four months old. Um, we've got her fully transitioned onto grower feed. We're going to start to introduce a high protein show heifer feed. Um, most of these products are 35 to 40 percent protein. They're not the most palatable things in the world, so we want to introduce them slowly. So between, say, four and five months of age, we want to start including show heifer feed, reducing the amount of grower feed. So typically, we'd start out with one to two pounds of show heifer, and we would back down the grower by one to two pounds. So our total grain intake is remaining the same. We're just removing a little bit of the grower, adding in a pound of the show heifer um, about one pound per week. So basically by the time she's five months old, she'd be eating four pounds of show heifer, four pounds of grower. Does that make sense? <clears throat> so five to 10 month old calves are kind of like middle school age kids. They go from little to big in no time. Um, we're really going to push aggressively with our protein feeding rates to get, get uh, frame height on calves. <clears throat> so we're going to continue to use the grower and the show heifer feed, but we're going to continue to increase the amount of 40% show heifer feed and reduce the amount of 18% grower feed. Okay. So we can, at this point, we can get all the way up to six pounds of show heifer feed and about one or two pounds of grower feed. Um, <clears throat> we also kind of start to see some differences in calves at this point. So calves, you know, five to 10 months old can start to vary in body condition, start to vary in size. So this is an age where it's important to start to observe those calves and see how we're doing on body condition. And Ben will get into that a little bit more um, if we need to adjust accordingly. Genetically, they all are a little different in how much, you know, if they're all eating the same thing, genetically one might have a tendency to carry more body condition than others. So we want to be observant through all these stages, but um, nowhere through this should we see loose manure. Um, this level of grain feeding and hay feeding won't, won't cause loose manure. So if we do have loose manure, we definitely want to uh, figure out why that might be. It may be a disease issue with our baby calves, um, coccidiosis, et cetera, with our wean calves. <clears throat> also, um, by the time we get to five and six months old, it's a time to transition from that uh, real soft, more digestible second, third cutting grass hay to a mature first cutting hay that's higher in fiber, which causes the hay to be lower in, in energy. Um, the low energy feed allows us to keep that body condition on those heifers um, appropriate. One thing to watch out for is excessive hoof growth. So the more protein we feed, we can see excessive uh, hoof growth in our animals. Um, <clears throat> so if you're starting to see excessive growth, we're going to want to back down on protein and also going to need to get those animals trimmed so that they walk appropriately. Um, five to six months old is, is also a time in which you can start introducing um, the probiotics or um, products that are on the market to improve digestibility of, of feeds, uh, performance or Lira Gold. There are a couple uh, products out there. Um, they're fine to feed, good products. The only thing, you know, you're going to improve the digestion of their feed, so you're going to actually get more energy out of the feed that they eat. So particularly as you get into yearlings and things like that, it, it may make the situation worse um, if she's too heavy already. So I guess that gets us up to kind of show stage here and I'll turn the, turn the mic over to Ben. All right, yeah, so, so now everyone good so far? No questions? We, we got up now to like, what, six to 10 months of age. So we're talking about your show, cage, show calves for this year so far from 
but March calves up until fall calves or summer calves. So that's about what we've been talking about so far, right? Getting them growing and, and uh, getting them started out right. So now we're going to talk a little bit more as we get closer to the show season. What other things can we affect other than, uh, you know, we obviously want them tall. We want them good start and tall. What else are we affecting with nutrition that will affect the show, or placing and showing? Yeah. Yep, dairiness. So the, their overall body condition. Yep. What else? What's that? Strength. Yeah, so uh, strength, uh, I'll tie that into like that, that depth and spring to their rib, right? That, that, uh, that overall rib and capacity, right? Um, so we can affect both those things with, with the nutrition as well as how tall they are. But what we really need to understand is how to, how to track it, how to watch that body condition. So we got them a good start, and every animal's different, but we really got to start watching their condition, especially after six months old, especially as we get closer and closer to show season. Um, so one thing that can really help with that is just clipping the hair off. So that way you can see their thighs and their, and their prominence out over the chine and over the rump, how much weight they have there. Does that make sense? So, so as you get closer to show season here, you're, you're going to want to clip them every few weeks, like maybe every six weeks or you know, something like that, just so that you can have a data point and say, I clipped her six weeks ago and she was a little too heavy. I adjusted the diet accordingly and uh, now she, you know, I'm clipping her again and she looks better. So I either keep it the same or, or maybe just adjust it a little bit, you know, tweak it each time. But it gives you some points to look at. Does that make sense? So that'll help a lot. But uh, as, we get closer to, as we get closer to show season, actually to the shows, the energy level of the rations is going to become really important. We're going to have to really watch that. How many weeks until you guys' local shows, the summer shows? Anyone know? Huh? Yeah, so I, I measure it in weeks. I, my wife thinks I'm crazy, but I know that it's like 11 and a half weeks until our county fair starts. You know, and, and that's important because I'm going to adjust the diets as we get closer and closer, particularly for that last six weeks. Because I'm trying to get maximum growth because I want to have a, a heifer that's tall enough. But as I get close in that last six weeks, I'm going to take that little bit of extra condition that was on her, trying to get maximum growth. I had just a little bit extra cover on her. I'm going to pull that off in that last six weeks. So I'm going to reduce the energy level, right? So I got to keep track of where I'm at. So I know it's like 11 and a half weeks. She thinks I'm crazy. It's all right. But uh, anyway, as we're adjusting these diets, we're still going to use those same two feeds that John was telling us about, that 18% grower and then the 40% show feed that we were talking about earlier. They've been on that since they were like five months old. We're just going to adjust the rates of each. So we're still going to be in that, you know, somewhere around half and half or better, more so leaning more now to a more aggressive side on the show, the show feed, more 40%. Um, and then as in that last six weeks, we're also going to reduce the total amount of green. We were talking six to eight pounds. As we get closer in those last six weeks, we might get down to four pounds or even down to two, depending on the heifers and their age and, and their overall condition provided that she's big enough and growing well. What about beet pulp? Who's feeding beet pulp at home? Anybody feeding it right now? Probably not. We're not real close to show season, right? So what would be a problem with feeding beet pulp uh, uh, too far in advance of the show? Huh? Yeah, right? So it's got a lot of sugar and digestible fiber in it. So we're trying to control the energy level. And feeding beet pulp is kind of counterintuitive because it's got a little bit of too much energy for, for controlling the energy of the ration like we want to. So, so really good. So the key is that you want them to eat it to get that spring of rib at the show. So you might feed it to them for a few days or a week before the show, but you really don't want to be feeding it overall, you know, from, from the rest of the year. Um, so yeah, so I only use it on days to fill show heifers. Another, another key point as we're getting closer to show season is that we're talking about these aggressive diets and, and lowering feed rates. That's going to not be the case for your March calves. Why would that be? Yeah, 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 the youngest age. So whenever I'm showing in July at my county fair, that calf's really only going to be, what, three, four months old maybe? You know, depending on when your county fair is. But she's not going to be much more than three or four months. So that's that critical transition period that John was telling us about. We want to really be careful through that period. So we're not going to get near as aggressive. The nice part is that because they're still growing so well, they'll thin down faster. So we don't have to get so aggressive. But just keep that in mind. March calves are kind of a different story than, than what we're talking about here. Um, as we get closer to show season, hay quality is just extremely important. It's important all the time. But uh, in here we have that, you know, Timothy hay works best. Um, you know, grass hays really are what you want. You want that coarse, mature, first cutting hay, right? Whether it's Timothy or an orchard grass or whatever kind of grass mix you got, you want it to be that late cut, 
low sugar, high fiber, really low energy hay. So the, the interesting part to me is, I, I find it interesting anyway, is that uh, sugar content can vary a lot in some of these hays. So if you're really struggling, struggling getting that last little bit of weight off of your calves, sometimes you can go back and look at the hay and it's a little higher in sugar than what you were thinking. So you need to adjust the diets even lower in energy as far as grain goes to make up that difference. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, washing animals regularly. Uh, I put that along with clipping, something that we got to do pretty often. Um, it's also a really good time to, to monitor body condition whenever, you, whenever you're washing them. Um, between that and air movement, you guys already went to facilities, right? You guys already saw that? So what, uh, what would washing animals and, and having good air movement over them, what would that help us in terms of nutrition, what we're talking about here? Yeah. Well, I was thinking the hair Yeah, hair growth helps. Yeah, we enjoy that. Yep, that, that helps. Yep. Yeah, so it keeps them eating, but uh, what else would it do for us? Yeah. It um, uh, helps air so Yeah, it keeps them healthy, but, but the, the one cool part that it does is it allows us to feed some of that energy because they're going to burn some of that off whenever they're cool, whenever they get cold. Even when it's June, if you've got a 60-degree evening, you will go wash your heifer and you put it underneath the big fans you got in the show barn. She's in there almost shivering, right? So it helps burn off a little bit of energy and get us down a little bit. What else could you do to burn a little energy on some of these heifers? Walk them a lot. Yeah, that, that takes a little more exercise. I tend to wash them, but, you know. it. <laughs> um, so that gets us through to some of that, that show season. And one, one other area that we need to talk about, though, is these yearlings. So this is your calves that you showed last year. Um, you know, let's say you had a December calf last year. It did really well at the All-American Dairy Show or State Fair. Um, you got her back home. Uh, what... What do, you, what do you do with her in the fall? You know, you got to start working with her then to plan for this year. Um, the opportunity that is right then to, to put her back on a little bit more grain. We were talking about that aggressive diet. Maybe she was a heavy heifer and I only had her on three pounds of show heifer or four pounds of show heifer per day last fall to keep her thin enough for the shows, right? Now I get her back home. It's October. I got until spring to show her again. I'm going to put her back on like six pounds of show heifer to make sure I get as much gain in height as I can over the next few months because I'm not going to show her for a while. But the key is knowing then to start thinning her back down in time. So we talked about that six weeks, right, before the, the county fair on some of those calves. How long do you think we need to start ahead on some of these heifers, some of the yearlings? So, so I figure it's six months. I remember six weeks and six months. So your county fairs are in like July, so that puts us clear back in January or February when we need to start. Yeah, question? Yeah, yeah, I like six. Yep, so, so uh, you want to start that early, right? You want to decrease the energy rate in, in February. What's the other advantage of starting in February as opposed to May or June? <laughs> it's cold. Yeah, so they'll pull a little weight off easier whenever it's cold out. So it gives you a chance to get them right back into the condition that you're looking for. <laughs> Uh, so that's a, there's the point there on the, you know, you have till February, I say January, February, yeah, to start thinning them back down. Um, but the key really is not to let them get too heavy. You got them home last fall, don't let them get heavy, or, you know, if you have a calf for this year, when you get her home this fall, don't, don't let her get heavy because it'll be much easier to keep it off than it will be to try and take it off next spring. Um, it was brought up earlier, the, the mineral supplementation there, that, uh, someone asked me earlier about jerseys. Um, I don't know who, what all breeds everyone has, but jerseys are uh, particularly hard to keep thin. Uh, so that's where sometimes you've got to reduce that feeding rate so low uh, on, these, on these grains, uh, even the show heifer, to keep those jerseys in the condition that you want them in, that you may need to supplement a little mineral to, to make sure they're getting the mineral they need without the calories from the grain. That's another key point. Um, but there again, the environment's a, a really extremely, extremely important. Uh, so we just got the quick points here. The energy and protein are equally important for those calves under four months age, you know, through those milk, the milk calf months. Uh, four to ten months of age is a time of rapid and aggressive growth. Uh, you got to scale your diets back during show season. That's what we talked about at six weeks for some of those calves, six months for some of the yearlings, right? Um, you really got to pull them back. Tailor each diet to each individual, so you really got to know each heifer and, and adjust them accordingly. Um, beet pulp only during show months, uh, you know, or just, just during the show is not, not for months on end. And uh, just don't ever let them get fat and everything's a lot easier. But uh, so, so one thing that I really wanted to stress to you guys, though, is that you really need to monitor this stuff so that you know how your success is. I can give you all these ranges and everything, and it works really good, right? You know, you go home and you follow my instructions exactly, and it might not work the same for you as it did for me or for the next guy, right? So 
you need to really keep track of, you know, we talked about monitoring condition, and that's, that's a hard thing to do. What about monitoring height? So we talked about that period of rapid growth. What, what do you guys think is a, is a amount of growth I can get on a heifer? So I got a heifer born in September, so she's a fall calf for this coming year. Yeah, I'm getting ready to show her this summer. I measured her March 1st to see how tall she was, right at the loin. April 1st, I measured her the same spot. How many inches do you think she can grow in one month during that? That's, keep in mind, that's right in the middle of that four to 10 month range. Yeah. Four five. Oh yeah, that, that would be awesome. <laughs> Three, okay, that'd be a huge growth spurt. Any, any other guesses? Yeah, so like one to two inches, right? So in that maximum growth range, my, my target is I would love to get an inch and a half to two inches every month. Doesn't always happen. So if I, if I can get at least one, and hopefully for a little bit more each, each month, um, it'll keep me right on track. Um, what about uh, a yearling for this year? That winter yearling we were talking about earlier that I brought home winter calf from last year, kept her on an aggressive diet through the winter, but now I started thinning her down because I started thinning her down in February. What, uh, what kind of growth rate do you think I can get on her? She's not maximum rate anymore. Yeah, so if I get half an inch a month, that's doing pretty good. I might, I might get an inch every now and then, but you know, I'm banking on an inch or half an inch each month there is kind of what I'm hoping for. So it's just, you know, set goals, and, but you gotta measure it. You know, you don't have to do it every month, but write it down, put the date beside it so you know that, geez, it's been six weeks since I measured them. When I measured them again, I gained two inches. You know, so that, is that where I should be or not? You gotta do that so that you can, not only that, but the body condition so that you can adjust these diets accordingly. Because each heifer is gonna be different. But if you're not tracking it, you can't make the adjustments like you need to. Does that make sense? Any questions? Cool, yeah. Um, like what would be the best way to take weight off of the calves? Uh, so the best way to take weight off calves, like young calves? Yeah. Um, so, so typically we can take weight off calves just by decreasing the total amount of grain or increasing the percentage of that eight pounds being show heifer. So it depends on the age. Um, you know, there again, like those March calves, you're still got them on, on like starter and grower right up until almost before the show. So you might, you might just incorporate, you know, as you get them onto that grower, you might incorporate one or two pounds of show heifer, increasing the protein. Um, like my fall calf that's already six or seven months old right now, um, I might just, I already have her on almost all show heifer. I might just, instead of feeding her eight pounds, feed her six for a while to get that weight off. So it's kind of different for each. You, you see what I mean? There's not like one. Okay. Any other questions? Any other thoughts? Yeah. Two minutes? No. No, I put her over. Right on time. Huh? We don't have a few minutes. <laughs> cool. Thanks, cool. Guys. Thank you, guys. Okay. Appreciate now, it. This group on your way out the door. Go out the door, turn a little bit.